Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Thanks everyone for coming to this uh, AP Systems webinar on AP Storage and our new product offering there. I'm Jason Higginson. I'm the head of marketing for AP Systems in the US. With me today is Chris Ling. He's our application engineering manager for the AP Storage product line. We're both excited to be with you today. A little quick introduction about AP Systems in case you don't know who we are. Uh, we were founded about 13 years ago in Silicon Valley and we are a global provider of module level power electronics for the solar industry. Uh, globally, we have four business units in the US. We're based out of Austin, Texas uh, with an R&D center in Cupertino. In uh, Europe, we are in Amsterdam and Lyon, France. In Latin America, we're based out of Guadalajara and our APAC uh, offices are in Sydney, Australia, and in Shanghai and Jiaxing. Some key facts about AP Systems. Uh, we're one of the largest solar microinverter suppliers worldwide. We're number one when it comes to multi-module microinverters, which are microinverters that serve more than one PV module. We have over three and a half gigawatts installed worldwide. That's more than 2 million microinverters. And we serve customers in over 100 countries. Uh, our EMA portal uh, monitors over 250,000 individual installations uh, globally. And we're also, we are also on some third-party financing AVLs uh, that you can see listed there. I want to introduce you to the AP Systems ecosystem that includes our DS3 series microinverters, our new energy storage product, the new AP battery product, uh, the ECUR uh, residential gateway, and our EMA uh, monitoring system in, uh, in both uh, accessible through your smartphone and online through your computer. So I'd like to quickly cover some AP storage features and benefits. So the AP Systems ELS 5K, it's a smart power conversion system or PCS. Uh, it has a nominal power rating of up to 5,000 volt amps and a peak backup power of up to 7,500 volt amps. Uh, the E stands for energy storage system, the L for low voltage battery input, uh, the S is for a split phase or a single phase. It's got a 5K power output, and uh, it offers automatic energy management features such as integrated monitoring and allows system owners to choose between backup, self-consumption, and time of use modes. So the ELS 5K PCS uses a 48 volt low, low battery voltage input. Uh, it can connect to multiple battery packs and two of the PCS devices can be connected in parallel uh, for greater charge and discharge capability. The system is designed for easy installation. It offers user-friendly interface features uh, through the EMA app uh, for viewing your system data. It's uh, offering a unique combination of power and efficiency and flexibility. So the automatic energy management features, the integrated monitoring, all that gives homeowners the ability to choose the mode that best suits their energy needs. And we're gonna get to those different modes in a bit. Uh, it's comp compatible with multiple battery packs. And again, you can connect two of those PCSs in parallel with up to 20 kilowatt hours in batteries. So it makes it a very versatile and scalable solution that can fit a variety of home energy needs. Another thing I wanted to share with you real quick is uh, in this webinar, we're going to be covering uh, the overview of the system and uh, the design. Uh, some of the more uh, detailed items like the uh, the detailed wiring, the installation, the commissioning of the system. Uh, it's a lengthy uh, uh, 
tutorial on that, uh, which we will send you as a link that you can view in your own time if you're interested. Uh, if you find the uh, the AP storage solution to be one that uh, you want to move forward with, uh, then you can absolutely go to uh, to view all that system uh, installation information uh, when we send you the links uh, after the webinar. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Chris Ling, who's our applications engineer. Chris, take it away. Thank you very much, Jason. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris. I'm with AP Systems as an applications engineer. And today I will be talking about the ELS 5K as part of the AP storage solution set. Before I get in too deep, I'm going to set the framework on defining a couple of commonly used terms. So primarily when I use the word battery, we're going to be talking about DC voltage. There are some AC voltage uh, batteries out in the market, but for this system is primarily interfacing with DC voltages. Another term I will be using quite often is PCS, which stands for power conversion system. It's also often known as a battery inverter and it's basically a bi-directional inverter that allows a DC battery to interface with the AC grid. So it can both take the AC grid to charge itself and it's able to output AC voltage um, when it's using its own energy. The ELS 5K is the AP Systems branded PCS uh, or battery inverter, and that's going to be what we'll be talking about today. Note that it is not a hybrid inverter because it does not take in DC PV. Uh, another term I would just quickly define ESS is energy storage system. And the system that I'll be describing today is an AC coupled ESS. Um, so it's the combination of the PCS and the battery, which will give you a storage system that can be AC coupled to the grid. And this is the entire system diagram of what an AP storage ESS looks like. So it consists, as, it consists of the AP storage PCS, uh, and that basically acts as the brain of the operations that provides the inversion from the AC battery to AC grid. And another big part is going to be the battery. The PCS will need to interface with the battery. We have a list of compatible batteries that the PCS, that our ELS 5K can interface with, and I'll be going over that list uh, later on in this presentation. Furthermore, we also have a transformer. I'll go into more details later on, but it's responsible for off-grid uh, output of split phase. <laughs> one other note is that one PCS can be connected to multiple battery packs. So if you want to have more capacity or energy storage, you can hook up more. Furthermore, if you want to increase the power output, you can also put two PCS in parallel. Now, the way the system is sort of wired is that there are two sections that you hook the PCS to. The first part is the top section where you have the main grid connected to the PCS, and you have the main service panel and any inverters that lie on the grid can be AC coupled in this region here. Furthermore, we also have a backup section as well, and that where you can, is where you can put a sub panel uh, where your backup loads can be connected to and where you can also put an inverter and PV module in this section as well. The difference between this area is the top section will work only when the grid exists, but when the grid goes down, the top section will not function, but anything connected to the backup bottom part will be functional. So the PV, the inverter, the backup loads will be functioning in off-grid. Note that the backup off-grid PV section can only be AP Systems DS3 microinverters, but for the grid only section, it can be any inverter since it's an AC coupled solution. Next, I'll be talking about the individual components. So first main product is the ELS 5K, which is a PCS or the battery inverter. From the DC side, the input is 40 to 60 volts. So it's a low voltage battery. The 
main way that the ELS 5K communicates with the battery is through CAN or RS-485. So it's important that the PCS knows how to talk to the BMS or the battery management system on the battery. On the AC side, the nominal output voltage is 240 volts single phase. Max continuous output power is five kilowatts when you have perfect power factor. And for peak or surge output power, it can do 7.5 uh, kilowatts at 10 seconds. So note that the ELS 5K on its own can only do 240 volts output. Um, when it's connected to the grid, the grid will be able to provide the neutral line so you can get 128 volts output. But when you're an off-grid scenario, you will need a transformer, which is this here, to be able to produce that 120 volt split phase output. It's simply a auto transformer, so it just takes in 240 volts and outputs 120 volts output. And the transformer has two varieties. We have a 10K version and a 5K version. If you're only using one ELS 5K, then you just need to hook up one 5K transformer. However, if you're using two ELS 5Ks, then you will use the 10K uh, transformer. So no matter how many ELS 5Ks you have, you will be using one transformer. It's either 5K or 10K. And furthermore, no matter how many batteries that you have hooked up to your system, you will just need either a 5K or a 10K transformer. Um, and it doesn't, and the number of batteries that you have doesn't determine whether you use 5K or 10K. All it is is just a number of ELS 5Ks because that determines the power output. As mentioned earlier, we have a listing of other batteries that we, a uh, good number of batteries that we're compatible with. AP Systems does provide our own battery. We call it the AP Battery 48 volts, 5.76 kilowatt hour uh, model. Um, the rated energy 5.76 kilowatt hours. The nominal voltage is 48 volts. The maximum number you could put in parallel is four with the ELS 5K. And the other thing that's also important is that with the ELS 5K, this battery is UL9540 certified. Um, so you can be sure that this is a safe system. Now I'll be going over the battery compatibility list in terms of which batteries we are compatible with. This is our current listing of compatible batteries that we have developed with the ELS 5K. Those brands are AB Storage, Saluna, UZ Energy, Dynas, DMEGC, Fortress, Heights, KSTAR, and HomeGrid. We have developed firmware on the ELS 5K that is compatible and functionally tested with all of these batteries. Of these battery brands, we have also acquired UL9540 certification for the AP battery 48 volt 5.76 kilowatt hour and the home grid stacked series. Note that all of these batteries already have UL9540A tested and some of these batteries have UL9540 certification, but just with other inverters. We're looking to expand our listing of compatible batteries and the UL9540 certification. Next I'll be going over is the different modes of operation that you can set the ELS 5K at. There are three modes that the ELS 5K can be running in. The first mode is backup mode. I like to think of this mode as the number one priority is to keep the battery as full as possible so that when you're on off-grid, you have as much capacity to last you the longest. When you're in on-grid scenario, what will happen is you will have PV and the grid be charging the battery to 100 and it'll keep that battery at 100. So that way, when you're in an on off-grid scenario, you will basically have the full 100% battery capacity to last your home as long as possible. The second mode that we have is self-consumption mode. And I like to think of this mode as minimize the grid usage as much as possible. So what will happen in this scenario is you will be using PV to charge your battery system. 
and you're going to be using your battery system and PV to power your home loads. If, however, you are either out of battery or you don't have enough power coming from the battery system and the PV system, then you'll be able to use the grid as a last ditch effort to power your home. The third mode uh, is we call it advanced mode or peak valley mode. I personally like to call it time of use mode because that allows you to set your schedule of how the ELS 5K is going to behave. In the app, what you can do is you can set the times that you're on peak and off peak. So that determines how the ELS 5K will behave. When you're on on peak, where the grid is expensive, you're going to be minimizing grid uses. So this means that your home loads will be using PV or the battery system as much as it can so that it does not use the grid. And it will only use the grid only when it's necessary. However, when you're on off peak, that basically means that the grid is cheap. So you're going to use the grid to charge your battery system and to power your home loads. So under this mode, you will be able to maximize your energy savings as much as you can, uh, depending on where you are and depending on the schedule of the time of use. Now I'm going to be going over the EMA app, which is basically the phone app that the end user will have available um, to monitor and control your system. This video I have over here is sort of a demonstration of what the end user will be receiving. And this first view here shows a live view of what the system looks like when it's running. You can see in this scenario over here, the PV is powering the home load. It is charging the battery and is also exporting excess power to the grid. Uh, it is currently at, the battery is currently at 80% charge and is in self-consumption mode. So once again, it's going to limit uh, grid usage as much as possible. You can shift right over here to see the energy that has um, for each of the sections. And this is the AP Systems Micro Inverter section where you can also see the modules uh, coming from the micro inverters of AP Systems. And over here shows you long-term data on what energy um, production, charge, export, consume, discharge, and import values look like just over time. And you can drag over and see what that looks like. Furthermore, over here, you can you can see that the end user is also able to select which system mode that they want to have the ELS 5K to function at. Right now, you can see that it's set at self-consumption mode, and it's only going to bring the battery down to 30% SOC. So that can all be changed. Uh, you can set to backup power supply mode. You can go into advanced mode to set the schedule of time of use. Um, so one interesting use point is if you know that something is happening and you need to uh, back up your system uh, so that you have as much battery as possible, you can, uh, the homeowner can go in and set to back up power supply um, so that then you start filling up the battery in case something happens. Now I'm going to go over the EMA dashboard overview, and this is the web portal for what the end user will also see. Um, from a installer perspective, the installers will also have the ability to have access to this information, uh, and they can use this to uh, debug or to control systems on their side. And this is what the end user will be able to see in terms of data. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about system wiring and the options and functionality that you will have when you wire things in certain ways. Just as a quick overview, this is what the PCS looks like when you're doing the wiring. And as you can see, it's quite simple and quite elegant uh, and quite clear on how to do the connections. Um, I would like to bring our attention to the middle section of the screen where you see grid and backup. And if you mentioned, if you remember from earlier, that's basically where um, you can put your backup section and your grid section. So grid is basically where the main grid is going to lie and where your main service panel um, is going to go. And the backup section is where your backup loads and backup PV are going to hook into. 
Uh, AT is where the transformer uh, goes in. Once again, it's for the off-grid section. There are sort of three ways that you can wire and arrange your system. This diagram I have shown here is if you want to have your PV system to work off-grid. So once again, when you lose the grid, you will be able to have PV on and charging both the battery and powering your backup loads, depending on the scenario. So one thing to note is that this system only works with DS3s um, at the moment. And there's also a limitation on how much size on the PV installation that you can put on the system. The way that you want to connect it is you basically set the DS3 inverters and have the AC output going into the backup section of the PCS. You can basically put all of your solar on the left side here into a backup load center. And that's it can also be where your backup loads be. And that is connected to the backup section of the ELF5K. The ELS5K is connected to the auto transformer, in this case, a 5K auto transformer. And that produces the split phase output from 240 volts to 120 volts AC. The ELS5K also connects to low voltage DC batteries uh, through this wire here. And furthermore, the ELS5K is connected to the main low center or the main service panel uh, through the system here. In this scenario, when you lose the grid, you will have the loads in the backup load center on, and you will also be able to have PV power being produced by the off-grid solar. The main limitations of this scenario is one, only DS3s are allowed to be used in off-grid. And furthermore, there is a limitation on how much PV you can put on this off-grid solar system. And we will go more into that in detail. This table over here basically shows how much off-grid PV that you can put. And it's a function of how many the ELS5K units that you have. And it's also dependent on how many batteries uh, that you can have as well. Because when you have more batteries, you can also charge faster. And same thing with the ELS5K. When you have more ELS5Ks, you can charge more. Um, and then you can see, for example, if you have one ELS5K and one AP battery, then the max PV system power is going to be 3.12 uh, kilowatt AC. Another option is you can have grid-tied solar in this scenario here, where if you just have solar in this section here connected to a load center or an AC combiner, connected to your main load center, and that will basically be an AC-coupled solution for your ELS5K. When you're in an on-grid scenario, so when the main grid exists, solar will be able to charge the batteries but when the main grid goes down and you're in an off-grid scenario, this solar array will not be able to produce power. The ELS5K will be able to use batteries to power the backup loads, but it won't be able to get power from solar. Now, the upside of this scenario is there's no limitation as to how much solar you put here, and there's also no limitation on what type of inverter solution you have here. As long as it's an AC coupled solution, you will be able to charge, but only when you're grid tied. Option three is to take a combination of both, where you have some of your array in the grid tied section, and you have some of your array in your off grid section. So that way, when you're on grid, you will have the ability to charge with the entire array. But when you're in off grid, only this section will be able to charge your batteries. Another thing to note is the ELS5K is capable of being in operation in parallel to get a total of 10 kilowatts of power. And this can be done in this sort of scenario. The main note is that if you were to do this, you will need to use the 10K version of the transformer instead of the 5K. And this is the overview of how the system is connected through the network. If you're using DS3s from AP systems, 
the DS3s communicate with our gateway device called the ECU-R and is communicated through Zigbee, which is wireless. Now, both the ELS 5K and the ECU-R will need to communicate with the homeowner's router and internet system via ethernet or Wi-Fi. And from there, you'll be able to access information regarding the storage and the solar solution, either through the EMA monitor website portal or the EMA app that can be found and downloaded on the phone. As mentioned before, the ELS 5K can do 5,000 watts. And what does that really mean? So the power output determines how many simultaneous appliances that you can have at once. Um, every case is going to be different, and this is probably a quick example of what that can look like, where you have um, where you have, this is what is an example of what 5,000 watts looks like. So you can have 20 LED light bulbs, phone chargers are quite small, um, your Wi-Fi router slash modem can be on, some computers can be backed up, uh, your refrigerator can also be backed up as well. Um, and if you really want to, you can also have the higher load, like an electric kettle or microwave or space heater. So you were kind of approaching 1,000 watts. So once again, this basically shows you how, how many appliances you can back up simultaneously. Now, you may not want to do this because if you have 5,000 watts running all the time and you just have a five kilowatt hour battery, that will only get you one hour of usage. So 5,000 kilowatt hours divided by, sorry, five kilowatt hours divided by five watt kilowatts, that will just be one hour. Um, so that doesn't really last long. So what a homeowner will probably actually do is something like this. Um, so say you have 10 kilowatts hours of batteries and you have this running at your home continuously. So, you know, 20 LED light bulbs, some chargers, router modem, computers, and your refrigerator. That will give you 865 watts. And if you run that continuously, you have 10,000 divided by 865 or 11 hours. So if you don't have backup PV and you're just running this continuously, then you'll get 11 hours of backup. So hopefully that helps give a good sense as to what capacity can give you. Now I'll go over the competitive analysis of what we've seen in the market. One thing that's really powerful about our system is the commissioning process is really quick. Um, we typically say it's around five minutes, but it's pretty quick in that you just need to connect your system to the home network, create an account for the user, and as long as you're able to do all of those quite seamlessly, um, the commissioning process can be quite fast and your end user and your homeowner will be able to have a functioning system uh, quite quickly as well. The other nice thing is that our system is battery agnostic. So you can choose your preferred battery um, if you have a certain vendor that you like. Um, and if it's part of that compatibility listing, then the system will work. Main thing is that if, it's, if the battery is not part of our listing, uh, definitely let us know and we can work on developing the protocol between our inverter and your battery so they can talk uh, correctly. And, uh, and that can be part of the solution. The other thing that's also nice is that it integrates quite perfectly with our AP Systems uh, microinverters. So you just have a single app, a single portal that's able to manage and monitor both the production side of your system with the microinverters and also the storage side of your system. Another fundamental advantage that we have is our system is AC coupled and low voltage DC. So because there is no high voltage DC, it's a much easier install, um, both on the PV side and also on the battery side. We also have some questions on particular um, competitors as well. As you know, with Enphase, they have the IQ uh, Battery 5P. The main thing that we have is, um, just to zone in on that specific example, 
the end phase battery systems are kind of locked into a specific battery type, whereas for us, you're able to pick and choose which batteries uh, that you want. And the other thing also is that when we're comparing with the IQ Battery 5P, uh, our continuous output power and surge power uh, is higher um, for the IQ battery. When we're looking at Solar Edge, the Solar Edge home system is also locked into only one battery type, but once again, we also are able to work with other battery solutions. And the other upside is because we are an AC coupled low voltage system, uh, you do not need to deal with high voltage wiring um, issues when it comes to installation. Next, I'll be going over the warranty information for our system. So with the ELS 5K, by standard, we have five years of warranty with an option to do five-year extension. And our AP battery comes with 10 years or 19.44 megawatt hours of throughput energy. So what this basically means is that if you sum the amount of energy that the batteries have discharged over its entire lifetime, um, that's basically what we mean by throughput energy. You can find specific language of what the warranty co covers and does not cover on a website, and we will make sure that we will have the links uh, provided so you can take a look. Now, that was an overview of how the system works. Now, let's talk a little bit about how do we go about designing a system. Just as an overall as to what the steps are, the first steps are, one, figure out what loads you can back up with an ELS 5K. Secondly, you figure out how many kilowatt hours of batteries you need. Then you determine how much off-grid PV can you put on the system. And finally, you figure out the feeders and breakers for your single line diagram. First, let us figure out what can we actually put on the backup service panel so that when we are in an off-grid scenario, the ELS 5K can back it up. So according to NEC 2020-710.15A, the capacity of the standalone supply shall be equal to or greater than the load posed by the largest single utilization equipment connected to the system. So in terms of the max load, the maximum 240 volt load or two pole load is going to be five kilovolt amps, which amounts to a 20 amp two pole breaker. For a single phase 120 volt load, that's going to be 2.5 kilovolt amps or a 20 amp one pole breaker. From a surge perspective, the maximum is going to be 7.5 kilovolt amps for 10 seconds. So in terms of what can you actually put on a backup service panel, you can have a scenario where the sum of the breakers on the backup panel can exceed 20 amps. But just remember that the actual simultaneous power cannot exceed that amount. And furthermore, there cannot be a single load on that backup service panel that exceeds that limit as well. Now, Lex, let us determine how many kilowatt hours of batteries do we want? So just as a first good starting point, you can start by having two kilowatt hours of battery capacity for every one kilowatt of PCS power output. So for example, if you have one ELS 5K, which corresponds to five kilowatts, that will get you five times two or 10 kilowatt hours of batteries. And this will actually determine how long your batteries will last and how fast they can charge. So the charge slash discharge time is gonna be equal to the kilowatt hour capacity divided by kilowatt power of the charge or discharge. So for example, if you have one ELS 5K and 10, kilowatt hours of batteries, the time that it will take to charge at five kilowatts is going to be 10 divided by five or two hours. Next, let us determine how much off-grid solar do are you actually allowed to connect to the system? So once again, this is the solar that you can connect to the backup surface panel so that when the main grid goes down, you will have that solar 
on to charge the batteries or to power the loads. Now, the steps that we can take to figure out how much off-grid solar we can put is going to be this uh, is is going to be these steps shown here. So first, you determine the battery max charge power. Secondly, you figure out the ELS 5K max charge power. Step three, you take the smaller number, which is going to be the bottlenecking power that you can use to charge the system. And in step four, you multiply by 1.25, and that is the maximum kilowatts of solar that you can add to your off-grid portion of the system. Here are some example calculations uh, that I will go over on how to calculate off-grid solar. So on the left side, let's evaluate the scenario where you have one ELS 5K and one AP battery, 48 volt, 5.76 kilowatt hour battery. So first let's determine the battery power for max charging. And that's going to be 2.5 kilowatts according to the data sheet. Now step two, let's take a look at the power of the ELS. And in this case is just one, so five kilowatts. Step three, let's determine the smaller number, which is going to be the bottlenecking charging amount. And in this case, it's going to be 2.5 kilowatts. Now step four, let's multiply the number by 1.25, and that's going to give us 3.12 kilowatts of off-grid solar. So once again, this is the amount of solar that you can put on the backup service panel so that when you're off-grid, you will be able to use that amount to charge your battery system. Note that you can have more solar, but that solar just needs to be connected to the main service panel as opposed to the backup service panel. Now let's take a look at the second scenario on the right side. Say we have two ELS 5Ks and a home grid with four st stacks of lithium batteries. So first let's determine the battery max charge power, which is going to be 14.4 kilowatts. Step two, let's determine the ELS power. And since we have two 5Ks, that's gonna give us 10 kilowatts of power. Now in this scenario, this time the ELS is going to be the charge limiter. So 10 kilowatts is a smaller number. And if we take that number, multiply it by 1.25, that will give us 12.5 kilowatts of off-grid solar that you can put on the system. Now let's take a look at the ampacities of the feeders. From the solar side, if we're just looking at AP systems microinverters, you can either use 20 amp or 30 amp breakers for each string. The table shown in the spread in this slide shows how many microinverters that you can put for each 30 amp or 20 amp breaker. So remember that for AP Sepsis microinverters, all you need to do is just to connect the DS3 AC outputs to a load center. And in this case, it can just be the backup load center. Just remember that when you are connecting off-grid solar, that there is a limit to how much solar that you can use. And you can use the exercise that we had described in the previous slide on how to determine that. For the feeder ampacities for the connection between the backup load center to the ELF 5K, it's going to be 20.8 amps. And if we're going to take into account the 125% rule, let's multiply that by 12, 1.25, which will give us 26 amps. So this means that whatever feeder that we use to connect between the backup load center and the ELS 5K, make sure to use wire that has the ampacity rating for 26 amps. Just also a reminder that whatever breakers that you are backing up on the backup load center, it cannot be larger than 20 amps. Now for the ampacity of the wire between the ELS 5K and the low voltage DC batteries, just remember that since this is low voltage DC, the currents are going to be much higher. The ELS 5K max charge DC current is going to be 100 amps. So keep in mind of that when you're picking the ampacity rating of your feeders. And finally, let's look at the ampacity of the feeder between the ELS 5K to the main load center. 
that's going to be 41.8 amps. And if we were to take the 125% rule, it's going to correspond to 52 amps. So what's going to be on the main load center is probably going to be a two pole 60 amp breaker. Just remember that 41.8 amps comes from the max charge or max currents that can occur from powering the uh, DC batteries and power from the solar. If you would like us to take a look at your SLD, we can send your SLD over to christopher.ling at apsystems.com and we can use that SLD to review and I can take a look and see if the SLD looks okay. Just as a note and a disclaimer that the installer is going to be responsible for the vinyl design and compliance to local codes, specifications and requirements. And furthermore, the AHJs are going to be responsible for approving your SLDs as well. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Hope this was helpful in being able to help you design your SLDs for your customers.